All right, so let's jump into this. I want to get into um, a thing that I think a lot of agents struggle with, which is like this fine line between like, how do I be a professional so that I get my, so, so that my clients respect me? And I'll, I'll tee this up like this. You know, when we talk about building strong relationships with people, there's, there's, there's three factors, right? There's trust, like, and respect. And I think our industry of real estate agents, they are so heavy on the like side that, that it almost hurts them. That's what I want to talk about today. They're, they're so concerned with being liked by their clients that oftentimes it backfires and they lose the respect of their clients. They lose the trust factor. And so oftentimes it happens in, in, in two different areas. It, it, it happens when an agent's trying to convert a prospect into a client. And it happens when they're fulfilling when they actually have a client. And so on the conversion side, this is where we see it a lot with agents that we coach. They go in there, they meet with the client, and they're just trying to get the client to like, 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 like. And they say, well, I've listed it with somebody else, because they might have liked you a lot. You guys, are, maybe you high five, maybe you had a cup of coffee. But I think what a lot of agents fail to do is earn a client's trust and respect. Because here's the thing, and I'll get you guys' thoughts on this. This is the way I frame it up. I, I ask an agent, and I ask myself this. Would you rather work with somebody that you trust and respect but don't like? Or would you, would you work with somebody that you liked a lot, but you didn't trust them at all, and you didn't respect them at all? And when you frame it that way, it seems it's so obvious that it's like, there's the priority. The priority of any type of fiduciary has to be on trust and respect first. And if light comes afterwards, fine. But I think a lot of agents, because just a lack of, honestly, just a lack of training, they don't know how to build trust and respect. So all they have is their interpersonal skills that they just have as, you know, naturally. And so that's all they have to work with. What are your guys' thoughts on that? I mean, I, I think, you know, and, and, it, and it all boils down. We could wrap this whole thing up right now to what you just said. It's just about training and knowing how to do it, you know. But um, just my thought on that, and Ben, you can jump in, is that when you have the, the trust and respect, as long as you're not like an a-hole or, or like, you know, like, like too abrasive, like you are liked. You know what I mean? Like, you, like people kind of naturally like you know, if you're upfront, honest, communicative, you kind of tend to be liked. And so when you don't lead with that, you lead with the trust and respect. It also builds the like factor as well. Yeah, that, that's exactly. So that's exactly right. Like when I was thinking about this topic over the weekend, that's kind of what I wrote down was when you try to get someone to like you and it backfires because you're always a yes man. You're always like, no, everything's no problem. Uh, there's, you're never being, you're never telling the truth. Nothing's ever an issue. It's like, dude, you're just beating around the bush. Mm -hmm. You're just, you're just avoiding conflict. And you know, people can, people can sniff that out. It's like, oh, this is just, a, this dude's a flake. She's a flake. He's a flake. You know, it's like, nah. And that's why they treat you like a commodity. And that's what we're talking about. You know, when you look at any other uh, professional that you trust and you respect, you, I, I would, I'd, I'd make the argument that they don't get treated the same way that 90% of this industry gets treated. And then the real estate agent wants to then resent the client. And it's like, well, wait a minute. This is a big one. You didn't set any boundaries. You told the client you could, you, they could call you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And the second you did that, because you thought, you know, this would be a nice thing to do, get them to like me a lot. And you can't fulfill on that. It backfires, you know, because it's like, Dude, I'm on my kid's birthday. Yeah, but you told me 24-7. There's no boundaries. And in fact, here's what I learned. Because I used to be that person. I can speak from experience. When you set boundaries with people, the respect goes through the roof. It goes up. When you tell a client, listen, I'm with my kids on Sunday. We go to church in the morning. And then we do. So I'm like off the radar on Sunday. Dude, people will respect that like crazy. 
And through that boundary setting, people, to your point, Colton, start to like you more. All right, real quick, and then we'll get right back to the content. If you're a real estate agent, you're looking to build a listing-based business, a business where you can generate a multiple six-figure income, a business that doesn't require you to waste thousands of dollars on the new marketing gimmicks, then I'm going to invite you to click the link right underneath this video to learn about our Listing Agent Academy coaching program. This is a six-month intense coaching system that more than three thousand agents from every market all over the country have now gone through. And here's the reality. Here's the truth. I will shoot you straight. This program is not for everyone. This is for agents who value being around winners. They value being in a community of other real estate agents that actually show up, that actually put forth the work. And this is for agents that embrace high levels of accountability and visibility. To get the details, all you have to do do is click the link beneath this video. You can schedule a coaching consultation and then you can decide for yourself. So with that being said, let's jump back into the content because you're a person of values. But when you communicate with no value system whatsoever and you become super accessible to people, you start to lower your value. You start to lower the respect. You start to lower the trust factor and therefore they actually start to like you less. It's like, oh, you're just a mule that I need that's in the way of getting me where I want to go, period. It's like, I got to deal with this flake just to get me into this house. Go go open that house for me, mule. You know, Sunday morning, 8 a.m. Mule, I need you here at 9 a.m. Go do this. Yes, sir. Hey, mule, I need you to paint the house. Mule, I need you to cut my grass. Then this is all happening. Mule, I want you at every single showing. Mule, I want you at my house every single day cooking us breakfast. And realtors will do it. Why? Because they're desperate. They're needy. They don't prospect. And so therefore, they have to behave this way. And at the same time, they resent it. They start to burn out and they leave the business. Ben, your thoughts? I think um, of rapport, right? Mm. Just going back to people the I, I believe have the wrong definition of rapport. And yes. to kind of where we started it is they think that rapport is... Um, you know, oh, wow. Oh, cool. You, you, you have, you have grandkids. Like I've heard of grandkids. Oh, you like golf. I love golf. Yes. You know, Brandon's famous, famous story is, oh, you have a dog. I love dogs. That's not my dog. I hate that dog. Right. That's right. Like I can't stand dogs. Right. I'm Backfire. allergic. Yep, yeah, exactly. Versus you go, you meet with an attorney, you meet with a doctor. What they do is they get right to business. That's they right. lead with expertise, they ask questions, they dive into what you're there to talk about. And then at the end, maybe it's, oh, oh, that's a cool shirt. Did, were you at the Masters? Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I love golf. And you build it on the back end. And if you like each other, if there's commonality, great. But that's not what you're there to do. Yeah. And, and that's like, here's, here's the thing I want real estate agents that listen to the podcast to really consider. You know, just just look look at the um, relationship between s someone and their attorney, right? And how much you um, respect their time, how much you 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 um, like you're not texting your attorney at eleven o'clock at night saying, "Hey, can you look at this document for me?" The same way realtors get treated. Well, whose fault is that? Because that's what I think about. That's the point that I want to make on, on this episode. It's like, who is to blame? Is it the person, the consumer? Because that person deals with attorneys. They deal with CPAs. They deal with other professionals. And I bet you, I bet you, they're not texting their attorney or their CPA on Christmas morning saying, hey, I need you. Call me as soon as possible. But realtors get treated that way every single day. And so this isn't about not giving good client service. But it's quite the opposite. It's about how do you get your clients the best results? And if they view you as a commodity, as a what we would call low value status, they aren't going to respect your opinion. And therefore, if they don't respect or trust your advice, what value do you really have to offer when they're driving the transaction, making mistakes because they don't trust your advice. 
They don't respect your expertise. To me, that's the point right there. Go ahead, Colton. No, I just... The, something I heard from an agent um, before I before you and I were working together when I worked at Sotheby's, he was, I think, the top agent in the office selling $40 million a year. And something he said at one of our broker meetings, like, really shifted my perspective on a lot of this kind of stuff. Because, yeah. you know, oftentimes, like, to, the, to, to your point earlier, we either don't know, like, we don't have the training to be able to do this effectively, or... We're worried if the client doesn't like us, if we say the wrong thing, if we make ourselves look silly, then we're not going to get them as a client, right? And so you're focused on the loss of a client you don't already have. Um, and, and so like going back to what his name was Alex, he said, completely shifted my perspective on this. They're not your client anyway. Yeah. So they're already they're already not your client. So why are you worried about saying the wrong thing or not be like, you know what I mean? And so just that little thing sounds so silly, but they're already not my client. So why am I worried about saying the wrong thing or trying to get them to like me? Like it doesn't matter. No, you you're you're a hundred percent. I mean, this is what I think I would say a huge portion of the conversations that I have in our coaching calls is that that exact same thing. I don't want to say the wrong thing because I'm worried. Worried what? They're not your client. Yeah. In fact, you not saying the right thing is the reason you're losing the listing. It's the reason they're not your client. That's the counter argument. You worried so much about, okay, I don't want to tell them the truth because I don't want to scare them off, is the reason they're not your client. Yeah. You know, you, uh, oh, I don't want to tell them the truth about the price of their house. They might not list it with me. That's the reason they don't list it with you. They list it with somebody who's, who walks in the house and says, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, there's a lot of amateurs who are afraid to tell you the truth. And boom, boom, boom. The, the seller thinks, oh, yeah, that's that mule we just met with, that flake, that beat around the bush, wouldn't tell us the truth. What, you think we didn't understand that you were just bullshitting us the whole entire time? But the amateurs said, oh, they, they really like I got one here, Johnny. I got a hot one. And then they call the client back a week later and say, oh, yeah, we listed that with Brandon. What? We, we talked about golf and our kids and our dogs, and we, we shared a cup of tea together. I thought you really liked me. Well, Johnny, I do like you a lot. I just don't trust you, and I don't respect you enough to list my $700,000 house. That's all, son. You know, that's what we're talking about. I think we're in an age, too, where um, people are just at such a high, like, they just don't trust anybody these yeah. days, right? So there's certain things that you can do and say that just put up their sales radar to yeah. the max. And when you come in and you're trying to be like little Johnny and all excited and over enthusiastic and tell them whatever they want to hear, like we're in an age where information is abundant, right? The, the days of, I think, used car salesmen getting that, that name is because Inform it's just an easy thing, right? To give an example, because everybody's gone through it. Information used to not be as available. Like they held the information. So they could mm. tell you whatever and you couldn't go Google it, right? Yeah. And now validation after validation has proven that people are just saying whatever they need to say. So, you know, using those buzzwords, getting stuck in those traps, it's just people feel it instantly. That's why they hang up on you. Yeah. And I guess, yeah, because this is just straight to the point, but like the, the thing, another consideration for people listening to the show is like, think about yourself. Like when you're dealing with people out there in the world uh, in, a, in a professional matter, who would you rather work with? Somebody who is um, transparent, somebody who offers the truth, even if it might not be what you want to hear, somebody who does not beat around the bush, Somebody who's just direct to the point, who tells you like it is, or the person who just beats around the bush, never tells you the truth, ne never shoots you straight, kind of twists everything to make it seem better than it really is. That is what we're talking about. And that's the art. That's the science of like winning clients. Because if, if somebody, if an agent thinks that, that the consumer doesn't sniff what's going on, you got it wrong. And if you constantly are meeting with sellers and they're constantly listing with someone else, it's probably because you're doing exactly what we're talking about. It's probably because you're going in there with very, very little substance 
and you're just high-fiving them, you know, patting them on the ass and like trying to raw, raw your way into a client, trying to get them to like you so much that you that it backfires. And and that's where that's where I would leave it. I don't know if you guys have any last thoughts on this. I have one final thought. And I think what we're talking about is a downstream um thing. And you just don't have enough leads. You're not going mm. on enough appointments. So you don't have the confidence to push somebody away because you do have commission breath. You don't have enough reps. And you say, well, Brandon, I've tried this, right? I've told them that, but I didn't get the deal and, and I need a sale. So I would argue like, you know, doing the things that we're talking about, being a professional starts, you know, with lead generation and just making sure we've got enough um, data to even, you know, make sure this works. That's a really good point. What, yeah, because we just talked about the symptom. The cause is just a lack of a full pipeline. So when you don't have a full pipeline, it's hard for you to tell the seller the truth. Because like Colton said, you're worried that if you tell them the truth, they're not going to list it with you. And you haven't or had a listing. You even have a lead. Yeah, you, you haven't had a listing in six and a half months. It's like, dude, I got to tell them what I got to tell them. I got to tell right. them their house is phenomenal or when it's not. I got to tell them it's worth $100,000 more when it's not. I got to, Ben, this is what I got to do. I have to lie to them to get this listing. I need a sign I have in the to ground, buddy. Vacuum their basement and garage to get this yeah. listing, Brandon. I'll bring you Krispy Kremes every Saturday morning. Whatever I have to do, Ben, I'll discount yeah. my commission to absolute nothing. I'll, I'll I'll take the listing under ridiculous terms at a price I know it will never sell. In fact, I heard an agent say that. Like, how do I knowingly took a listing overpriced? which I think should be a huge uh, ethics violation, quite frankly. I think it should be a mat, like the biggest one because that's, that's to me, that's the closest thing to malpractice in our industry. But agents do it all the time, you know, because of desperation. And they have desperation. They have neediness. They have commission breath because they don't have a pipeline. And they don't have a pipeline because they never prospect ever. So anyway, great stuff. I just, I, I hope that, that come that came across the right way. It's not we're not saying necessarily to to we're not saying to push clients away. We're we're saying to go in there be a professional. Tell people the truth. Shoot them straight. Tell them how it is, you know? Um and and the tactic is to get their permission to do it. And I think you'll find that clients love dealing with a professional and they can sniff your commission breath the second you walk in if you're an amateur that desperation reeks right out of your pores and you're just not going to win business that way. That's so huge. I think if anything, just wrapping it up, the one takeaway, if you've never done this or you don't know how to do this, just get their permission to tell like literally that simple. It make, it puts you at ease too to do it, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's huge. Love it. All right, you guys, if you have questions, throw them in, a ch uh, in the chat below and we'll see you guys in the next episode.